All right, well, good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. Well, I know some things, but everything I know is sitting inside of the announcements, and as they shrink, that means I'm just knowing less and less, which is hilarious. Um, I just want to lift up a few things for you. Uh, please check out that, or remember that tomorrow is that DLC book club road trip. You should go on that. Uh, and Sheila will want you to sign up for that sooner than later, like today, right, Sheila? All right. If you sign up tomorrow after they leave, <laughs> it's chaos with Sheila. You can just show up. No, please, but uh, it'll be good. Uh, next week we begin uh, the Marys of the Bible Bible study after worship, and that will be exciting. And we'll also then be taking some of those texts from that study for the following week and and worshiping around those. Uh, I think we're still looking for another Sunday offer encounter, so please uh, connect with Sharon Campen uh, if you're willing to count some money. Also, check out that we are there. We are our sin is actively working to connect students to their campus ministries, who are students that are in college, to their campus ministries, um, and so check that out and how to go about doing that. Um, uh, because of, of just the amount of workforce that we have and the number of ministers that we have available, um, 
We're going to ask that folks that are worshiping outdoors to come to the door to get their bulletin and, less, uh, and the uh, communion elements and the like, and then they can go and park uh, going forward. We'll see how that works. And otherwise, just check out, the, check out our, our weekly stewardship as well. So those are the things that I know and I wanted to lift it up. It is, of course, Yellow Bag Sunday. And of course, we have some brown boxes and some brown bags too, which is, which is just fine. They contain all the good things. Are there, are there any announcements for the good of God's people? And just remember that we prepare and equip our neighbors and ourselves to respond to the Holy Spirit's call wherever that call leads. And we know that we're doing our mission when we witness faith, joy, and grace from our work. So don't forget that. I will invite you to rise then as we then take a moment to confess, uh, confess our sins and receive forgiveness. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in all that uh, uh, greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors as, as we uh, pray out loud. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. And we have ordered your poverty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked courage to receive, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Church, God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go ahead and sing our song, our gathering song in verses 1 and 4. Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. If you will forgive me for going off script here for a moment. Last Monday, we had the remembrance called Memorial Day. Memorial Day. To remember those that have fallen in the service of our country. Last Sunday night, I watched the concert from the mall in Washington, D.C., and they had this family there. They were representatives acting as though they were members of that family, but the family itself was there also. It was a mother, father, and brother of a soldier that had fallen 10 years ago in Afghanistan. And the words of the mom just hit me right here. 
And I think it's something we need to do today. Forgive me. She said that the first year it happened for Memorial Day, she got 100 phone calls thanking the family for the ultimate sacrifice. Then the next year she got 75 or so. And every year it kept going down. Now she doesn't get any. And I thought, Memorial Day isn't a day. Memorial Day is every day. So I would ask that if there are any of you in the audience or out in your cars, if you are a member of a family that lost someone in the service to our country, would you please stand? If you have served in the duty, the military, for our country, please stand. Hoorah. Keep, keep standing. If you are a member of a family of someone that served, you weren't serving, but you were serving because they were serving. Please stand. That leaves the rest of us to stand, to thank you and your family and your loved ones for Memorial Year, not Memorial Day. Thank you. <laughs> While teaching about forgiveness and sin, Jesus said this, Wherever two or three of you come together in my name, I am there with you. Please take a moment to greet those near you who share the peace of Christ's presence with one another. to all those of you worshiping with us outdoors. I was just teasing Al. My daughter is sitting in my office desperately waiting for me to drive her down to Chicago so we can go see Taylor Swift tonight. And so I was saying, I have a hard leave at 10.15, Al, so we gotta, we gotta start. <laughs> then again, I'm the one who goes off script all the time, so it's gonna be you and I that are gonna have to go explain this to my daughter afterwards. So. Church, let's pray the prayer of the day together. God of heaven and earth, before, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and
first reading is from Genesis. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And so it was. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be light in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I've given every green plant for food and it was so. God saw everything that he made and indeed it was very good and there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will uh, chant this psalm, Psalm 8, all together.
second reading is from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But your eyes for God's word. hear a short story about Jesus. This one is from Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. I used to have a joke. Uh, there was a congregation I was working with, and they were really struggling because they really, really wanted to hold on to their old green hymnals. They didn't want to move to updated hymnals. So my joke was, Jesus didn't say at the end of that story, I'll be with you till the end of the age, but until that time, here's the LBW. <laughs> Some people didn't appreciate my sarcastic jokes. Uh, any young people want to join me up front for a children's message? Well, hello, you three. You too. You too, Minister Mary. Oh, you got another one. Oh, there we go. Come on up. Or don't. <laughs> all, right. all right, sweet. Let's all do this. Uh, I don't know. Not, I don't know what's on my notes though. So, um, so imagine nothing but darkness. You got it right. You got it right, young man, with your eyes closed. Imagine nothing but darkness, emptiness, just nothing, right? Now imagine God breathing onto that nothingness. And what happens when you breathe? Like. Breathe out for a second. Maybe you put your hand in front of your mouth. What, what do you feel? What do you feel? Do you feel anything? Okay. Yeah, that's right. So like, yeah, a little breeze. So think about it. Like this breeze of God's breath sort of goes over this nothingness and disrupts everything and shakes things up and everything. And there starts to be light and there starts to be darkness in the world. And God says this is good and evening comes. And God just keeps doing this keeps building things bit by bit, makes water and land, makes animals, makes the, makes the sun and the stars, fills the land and the water with all kinds of creatures, fills it with, with plants and animals, builds the very sort of the world that we live in, the, 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 how it works and the chemistry and the science and, and all the interesting things that happen here. And God thought it was all good. And eventually God made us. And you too. And, and said, hey, take care of this stuff. Take care of, take care of this creation and take care of this world that we live in. Because it's, it's the one that you get. And so you got to take care of it. I don't know. I think that's pretty good. Now, that seems like a lot of hard work, right? That seems like a lot of hard work to go create like, all, of, all of existence, right? The whole universe. Well, then God took a break and rested for the day. And we are invited as, as Jesus people to also make sure that we take Sabbaths or days of rest so that we can be healthy and good and, and, and strong as well. I don't know. I think that's a really, it's a really exciting story. We heard that story earlier this morning, but it was really, really long. But this way, I don't know. I just think it's really powerful. I don't know. What do you think? All right. I have a prayer. 
and then I have a surprise that you four cannot guess what it is. Let's say a prayer. Creator God, with your breath, with your very wind that you came out of you, you created all that we see and that all that we have, and you even created us, and that you even want to be in relationship with us, and you're doing everything to keep us together, so thank you for that. Thank you for these young folks and, and, and their families and all their supporters that exist in the world. We really appreciate it. We ask that you stay with them and grow with these young people as they continue to journey in this beautiful world that you created. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's see what I got. I have Toffee Crunch Flavor Oreos. I bet you couldn't guess that. I probably need to get some more. Oh, okay, now you're excited. Now you want to... There you go. Do you like these? Should I keep getting toffee flavored ones or should I get different flavored ones? Different ones? Okay. You don't like these ones? And a cookie? I'm gonna go to Woodman's, I'm gonna find the next weird flavor they have on the shelf. <laughs> it's like Nabisco's like, I don't know. I don't know if I can stay in business if I don't make weird flavors of Oreos. The prayer is that you who are here and those of you who are worshiping outdoors, if any of you are worshiping in other parts of the building, or if you're even worshiping with us through time and space online, that you, that the Holy Spirit uses me so that you hear the Lord's promise for you today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yesterday, our color, not yesterday, last Sunday our color was red. This Sunday our color is white. And then, I don't know, we have months and months and months of green. Sometimes it, that gets broken up with some event. Uh, but this is Holy Trinity Sunday. It's the, it's the, uh, I don't know, it's the day that, we Lutherans who are really, really good at our sort of God the parent and lawgiver and God the son, the savior, and not so good with our, with our theology around our Holy Spirit, we sort of remind ourselves that, that we have a triune God, a three God in one. And I guess this is also is supposed to be the mark of the calendar that I, as your pastor, give you your annual explanation of what the Trinity is, and I make sure that you understand it deeply because it's so super important that you have it perfectly. But I, I don't want to this morning. So instead, I prefer to let a couple of gentlemen, their name is Donald and Connell, and they're from the YouTube channel Lutheran Satire. I want them to explain it to you with the help of a guy named St. Patrick of Ireland. Maybe you saw this on Facebook. I posted this on, on, on uh, St. Patrick's Day. Let's go to the next slide. We're going to watch this little video. It's about four minutes. It's hilarious. <laughs> Okay, Patrick, tell us a bit more about this Trinity thing. Yeah, Patrick, tell us. But remember that we're simple people without your fancy education and books and learning, and we're hearing about all of this for the first time. So try to keep it simple, okay, Patrick? Yeah, real simple, Patrick. Sure, there are uh, three persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yet there is only one God. Don't get what you're saying here, Patrick. Not picking up what you're laying down here, Patrick. Could you use an analogy, Patrick? Sure. Uh, the Trinity is like uh, water and how you can find water in three different forms. Liquid and ice and vapor. That's modalism, Patrick! What? Modalism, an ancient heresy confessed by teachers such as Noetus and Sibelius, which espouses that God is not three distinct persons, but that he merely reveals himself in three different forms. This heresy was clearly condemned in Canon 1 at the First Council of Constantinople in 381 AD, and those who confess it cannot rightly be considered a part of the Church Catholic. Come on, Patrick! Yeah, get it together, Patrick! Uh, okay, uh, then the Trinity is like uh, the sun in the sky, where you have the star, and the light and the heat. Oh, Patrick. Come on, Patrick. That's Arianism, Patrick. 
Arianism? Yes, Arianism, Patrick. A theology which states that Christ and the Holy Spirit are creations of the Father and not one in nature with him. Exactly like how heat and light are not the star itself, but are merely creations of the star. That's a bad analogy, Patrick. You're the worst, Patrick. All right, sorry. The Trinity is like uh, this three-leaf clover here. I'm going to stop you right there, Patrick. Yeah, hold your horses, Patrick. You're about to confess partialism. Partialism? Yes, partialism. A heresy which asserts that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not distinct persons of the Godhead, but are different parts of God, each composing one-third of the divine. And who confesses the heresy of partialism? The first season of the cartoon program Voltron, where five robot lion cars merge together to form one giant <laughs> robot samurai, obviously. I've never heard of Voltron. Of course you haven't. It's not going to exist for another 1,500 years now, Patrick. Yeah, get with the program, Patrick. I mean, really, Patrick. I'm going to stab you in the face, Patrick. Okay, that was probably a bit much. <laughs> All right, I'll try again. Uh, the Trinity is like how the same man can be a husband and a father and an employer. Moralism again. All right, then it's like the three layers of an animal. Partialism revisited. Fine, the Trinity is a mystery which cannot be comprehended by human reason, but is understood only through faith and is best confessed in the words of the Athanasian Creed, which states that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance, that we are compelled by the Christian truth to confess that each distinct person is God and Lord, and and that the deity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-equal in majesty. Well, why didn't you just say that, Patrick? <laughs> yeah, I'm just beating around the bush, Patrick. Now let's all put on some giant green foam hats, get riotously drunk, and vomit in the Chicago River to celebrate our conversion. So what do you guys do for a living? Well, we come from a long line of snake farmers, Patrick, but truth be told, business has been real bad lately. Oh. Yeah, about that. If you don't get that last joke, St. Patrick's miracle was that he got rid of all the snakes from Ireland, so if Donald and Connell are, Pat are snake farmers, they're in real trouble. So, my friends, I'm gonna read something to you and I'm gonna ask you if you recognize it. And uh, I'll tell you this, if you're really truly Lutheran, then you're gonna recognize this. And so I'm gonna ask you what it is after I'm done reading it, okay? So it says, whoever wants to be saved should above all cling to the Catholic faith. Whoever does not guard it whole and inviolable will doubtless perish eternally. Now this is the Catholic faith. We worship one God and Trinity, and the Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the divine being. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Spirit is still another. But the deity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-eternal in majesty. What the Father is, the Son is, and so is the Holy Spirit. Uncreated is the Father, uncreated the Son, uncreated is the Spirit. The Father is infinite, the Son is infinite, the Holy Spirit is infinite. Eternal is the Father, eternal is the Son, eternal is the Spirit. And yet there are not three eternal beings, but one who is eternal. There are not three uncreated, unlimited beings, but one who is uncreated, unlimited. Almighty is the Father, almighty is the Son, almighty is the Spirit. Yet there are not three almighty beings, but one who is almighty. Thus the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and yet there are not three gods, but one God. Thus the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord, yet there are not three lords, but one. As Christian truth compels us to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so Catholic religion forbids us, so, to, so say there are three gods or lords. The Father is neither made nor created nor begotten. The Son is neither made nor created, but was alone begotten of the Father. The Spirit was neither made nor created, but proceeding from the Father and Son. Thus, there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three spirits. And in this Trinity, no one is before or after, greater or less than the other. All three persons are in themselves co-eternal and co-equal, so we must worship the Trinity in unity and the one God in three person. Whoever wants to be saved should think thus about the Trinity. It is necessary for eternal salvation that one also faithfully believe that our Lord Jesus became flesh. For this is true faith, and we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, is both God and man. He is God, begotten before all worlds, from the, be from the being of the Father. He is man born in the world from the 
from the being of his mother, existing fully as God and fully as man, with a rational soul and a human body, equal to the Father in divinity, subordinate to the Father in humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not divided, but he is one Christ. He is united because God has taken humanity into himself. He does not transform deity into humanity. He is completely one in the unity of his person without confusing his natures. For as the rational soul and body are one person, so the one Christ is God and man. He suffered death for our salvation. He descended into hell and rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people shall rise bodily to give account of their own deeds. Those who have done good will enter eternal life, and those who have done evil will enter eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. One cannot be saved without believing this firmly and faithfully. So, my friends, what is that? How Lutheran are you? It will take just one of you to make us all Lutheran. Going once, going twice. Did you know, how many creeds do we have in the church? Well, how, give me an exact number. Yeah. Three. Can you name them? I know you can't, because you can't, because that's the third one. The Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the so-called Athanasians' Creed. This is one of the three ecumenical creeds that we Lutherans recognize. It is included in the Book of Concord, our collection of confessional documents. I found a good description of this creed on the website for the Christian Reformed Church. This creed, I'll quote it here, this creed is named after Athanasius, who was alive in the 3rd and 4th century, a champion of orthodoxy against Arian attacks on the doctrine of the Trinity. We heard some jokes about Arians in our video. Although Athanasian did not write this creed, it is important, it's improperly named after him. Uh, the, same, the name persists because it's, until the 17th century, it was commonly ascribed to him. It really came out of the Latin Gaelic church, uh, probably in southern France. Uh, it is not from Greek or Eastern, but from the Latin and Western origin, and is not recognized by our Eastern Orthodox siblings today. So Oleg would say there's only two creeds. We Lutherans you know, got the right answer. We know there are three. Uh, apart from being the opening and closing, apart from the opening and closing sentences, this creed consists of two parts. The first setting forth the orthodox doctrine of the Trinity, and the second dealing chiefly with the incarnation, the two natures doctrine. The only thing I would add to that description is that the original Latin of this creed was that was written and used the word Catholic, while our German and maybe our older English translations tended to use the word Christians because they tended to be grumpy about the big C Catholic Church. But I want you to understand that Catholic, the word Catholic in all our creeds, because we use it for all our other creeds, uh, simply means universal. It means like the universal church, right? It is not specifically owned by a church that keeps its headquarters in Rome. Here at Decor Lutheran Church, we are, we are a Catholic church. Our big C Catholic neighbors are a Catholic church. Most of our Christian church neighbors are also Catholic churches. It is just being part of the church universal. The purpose of creeds for us as, as part of the church universal is to describe doctrines. And in a lot of ways, they are just really just confessions. But they're describing doctrines, what is essential to believe. So as soon as you say, and, and, and so you know, what is right and, and, and correct and proper and so forth. But here's the thing, right? We know this, friends. As soon as you say what is right, what is correct, what is good, then you're also saying what is wrong, what is mistaken, and what is evil. And all of that is just all kinds of law. It's not gospel, and it's not gospel promise, but rules and judgment. Creeds by themselves do not save. We know this as Lutherans. We're really good with our Jesus part of the Trinity. We know Jesus saves. Now, earlier I teased you all, and I said, I don't know, for any of us to be Lutherans, one of us would have to know that that was the Athanasian Creed. Luckily, I did, so we're okay. But I think... Um, what I think and what I know is that we Lutherans are some of the best Jesus people in the world to understand about the power of Jesus and Jesus and, and, and the saving power of Jesus and that creeds don't do it. That Jesus saves by grace alone and whatever faith you and I have are gifts from the Holy Spirit because the creator created us to be in a relationship with God. Maybe that is my best attempt at the Trinity this morning. I have a teacher, she is now the Reverend Doctor and now Pastor Terry Elton. 
I remember her monologuing so often about the Trinity and how the dance and the jazz and the improv between the three and one was a model about the dance, the jazz, and the improv in a healthy congregation. She was happiest with me as a student when I would dance with the community or help a community do unstructured jazz. It was not about order or rules or power because if you asked who was right, the answer would be yes. And if you asked who has the power, the answer was could only be yes. It was messy and adaptive and full of grace like our God. So I want you to hold on to that messiness and adaptability and the grace of God and God's church here at Decorah. The thing that, as, as you do that, I want you to remember that. The thing that really stands out to me this morning from that Athanasian Creed that I read earlier is these two lines. I'll read them again. It says, at his coming, all people shall rise bodily to give an account of their own deeds. That is awesome. Those who have done good will enter eternal life. Those who have done evil will enter eternal fire. Well, what do those two lines have to do with mess and change and grace? That sounds more like judgment and law to me, not salvation and gospel promise. Doesn't sound like good news. Well, I'll tell you what. Okay, and it comes down to a question. Who's the judge? Who's the judge, folks? I know you know this answer. Who's the judge? Wife. Yeah, your wife. I've, I've been waiting. I've been waiting all morning, Bruno. You've been so good. You hadn't made fun of your wife all morning. I was like, yes. You're much loved, Bruno. But who's the judge? Be more specific. Be more specific. Which person? Jesus is the judge. Jesus is the judge. So I have some more questions for you. I have three questions for you. Folks, who promised to side with you during your baptism? Who promised to stay with you when you eat communion? Who puts in your ears and eyes and heart and brain the gospel promise? Who? Your mother and father. Jesus, folks. That's who the judge is. That's who's promising to stay with you. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and Son. So that means if there's any preaching that happens, any promises that are made, anything that goes in your ear, those are Jesus' promises. It's Jesus. And yes, you guys got it right. Jesus is God. And God is the only person who will not break a promise. So those of you here who belong to Jesus, who are claimed by Jesus, you know that like everyone else, you will be judged but you know that you will be judged good. Because that's what Jesus promised. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and sing our song of the day, How Great Thou Art. Yep, that is right, How Great Thou Art.
changed us up from our from our usual I think it's an it's the Apostles Creed this season but we're going to confess our shared faith in the words of Athanasian Creed it's a long one so you can stay seated so let's go whoever wants to be saved should above all cling to the Catholic faith whoever does not guard it whole and inviolable will doubtless perish eternally now this is the Catholic faith we worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the divine being. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Spirit is still another. But the deity of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is one equal in glory, O eternal in majesty, with the Father is the Son is, and so is the Holy Spirit. Uncreated is the Father, uncreated is the Son, uncreated is the Spirit. The Father is infinite, the Son is infinite, the Holy Spirit is infinite. Eternal is the Father, eternal is the Son, eternal is the Spirit. Yet there are not three eternal beings, but one who is eternal. As there are not three uncreated and unlimited beings, but one who is uncreated and unlimited. Almighty is the Father, Almighty is the Son, Almighty is the Spirit, yet that there are not three almighty beings, but one who is almighty. Thus the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, yet there are not three gods, but one God. Thus the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord, yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. As Christian truth compels us to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so Catholic religion forbids us to say there are three gods or lords. The Father was neither made nor created, nor begotten. The Son was neither made nor created, but alone begotten of the Father. The Spirit was neither made nor created, but is proceeding from the Father and the Son. As there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three spirits. And in this Trinity, no one is before or after, greater or less than the other. But all three persons are in themselves co-eternal and co-equal. And so we must worship the Trinity in unity and one God in three persons. Whoever wants to be saved should think thus about the Trinity. It is necessary for eternal salvation that one also faithfully believes that our Lord Jesus became flesh. For this is the true faith that we believe in and confess, that our Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, is both God and man. He is God, begotten before all worlds, from the being of the Father. And he is man, born in the world, from the being of his mother, existing fully as God and fully as man, with a rational soul and a human body, equal to the Father in divinity, subordinate to the Father in humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not divided, but it is one Christ. He is united because God has taken humanity into himself, he does not transform deity into humanity. He is completely one in the unity of his person, without confusing his nature. For as the rational soul and body are one person, so that one is God and man. He suffered death for our salvation. He descended into hell. 
and rose again from the dead. He has sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people shall rise bodily to give an account of their own deeds. Those who have done good will enter eternal life. Those who have done evil will enter eternal fire. One cannot be saved without believing this firmly and faithfully. Sheila, we totally should have Sunday schoolers memorize this about third grade. I'm joking. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for our world in need. Your mercy is great. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in their proclamation of the gospel promise. Direct each of us into lives of humble service. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind. Wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. Your mercy is great. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations, that we might agree with one another and live in peace. Your mercy is great. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence. Any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick. We ask you care for those who have hurt us in the past and those with blessings to celebrate. Today, we especially pray for the family and friends of Bonnie Jankowski, who died Wednesday, the family and friends of Michael Poznaski, who died Thursday, Julie Clark, as she recuperates from knee replacement, and Florence Smudlock and family. Wow. Alice Moan, her sister, has cancer. Carson Schmudlock, nephew, has cancer. Colin Martinson, a nephew with cancer. Kim Schmudlock, daughter, with cancer. Mike Luce, brother-in-law, with dementia. We pray for those and anyone else we name aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, God. Your mercy is great. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for all the saints who have died in this world and now rest in you confident in the promise of the resurrection in the age to come. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. As you notice, there are a lot of yellow bags up here today. We thank you for that service. 
In the back, you notice that the number of quilts keeps getting larger. It is amazing the things that go on in this church, day in and day out. A reading from Isaiah. I tell you what it really means to worship the Lord. Remove the chains of prisoners who are chained unjustly. Free those who are abused. Share your food with everyone who is hungry. Share your home with the poor and homeless. Give clothes to those in need. Don't turn away your relatives. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Church, thank you for supporting God's mission and ministry here at Decor with the resources God has given you. We will now take a moment to collect your gifts and offerings as the table is set. There is also a station at the welcome table in the back for gifts given with credit and debit cards. So we've heard this story before, but let's hear it again. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it for all to eat, and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you, please do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, after he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, and he said, this cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, please do this for the remembrance of me. I invite you to rise as you're available. Lord, please remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Christ's table. So come and eat what is good. 
this meal belongs to Jesus, it doesn't belong to us, that means all of you are invited. Uh, if you've ever participated in communion in the past, you're welcome to participate today, no matter your tradition, tradition, Christian tradition or background. Uh, if you cannot or will not take this meal for any reason, you're still invited to come forward to receive a blessing. We'll be doing intinction, so you'll receive a wafer and dip it in the juice or wine. The wine will be on either side, the juice will be in the middle. Uh, please be seated and give a moment for the ministers to communion. with you. to the table of mercy, prepare with the wine and the bread. All who are hungry and thirsty, come and your souls with bread. Come with the Lord's invitation, receive from his nails
The God who calls across the, across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. We will sing verses 1 and 4 of Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Church, please go in peace and share the harvest. Thanks be to God.